What's up guys, Viper FEV here, and today, well not today, but a couple days ago, Beta Flight 4.1 uh, officially has now became a release candidate, so now we can kind of go over all the little changes, all the major features, and everything else that they have added to Beta Flight 4.1. So we're going to go ahead and go over the GitHub page and uh, go over everything. Um, I will leave a link to it down below uh, so you guys could take a look for yourself. Um, there has been some interesting things. Uh, there has been some changes on the configurator as well. So we'll be doing going over that as well, going and diving down in that. And yeah, so let's go ahead and get to it. All right, so we are at the GitHub for beta flight releases. Um, if I'm going to leave a link to this down below if you guys want to go ahead and read it yourself. But let's go ahead and get, get to it. It looks like there's been a number of oil uh, changes and improvements in the release requiring changes to Beta Flight Configurator. So that's pretty much talking about how they've added and changed some things in Beta Flight Configurator. Um, we'll go over that after we're done with these patch notes. Uh, they also updated the black box log viewer. And then we also have the introduction of VTX control, which we'll talk a little bit further down below. Um, so let's go ahead and take a look here. We also have some optimizations with the OSD fonts. What they went ahead and did is now you have to update with 4.1, you have to update your OSD's fonts. Uh, so you'll do that upon flashing. And then we also have, looks like they're pretty much just a reminder here. The F3 uh, flight controllers have been removed from beta flight 4.1 and they weren't in 4.0 either. But let's go ahead and get to the major features. New and improved feed forward 2.0. They pretty much just changed the um, how it's calculated and it should really be an improved feel. So I'll have to test that out and tell you myself. If you want to read more about it, you can go ahead and read this long, long, long post about all the changes. Um, I'm not going to go too much into that. Moving down here, we also have a reworked bi-directional D-shot. That is pretty much they have added now B-Heli S ESCs to this, so now we can go ahead and uh, use uh, BLES with RPM filtering, which is really kind of awesome. And now it's also in a configurator where we can change some settings as well. Um, another big thing that they actually don't even have a note on it is that they removed DSHOT 1200 from Betaflight. Yes, they removed DSHOT 1200 from Betaflight. They said it is it pr produces more problems than it's worth and it's not really a big improvement over dshot 600 so that was their reasoning to remove it and it has been removed and i'll show you guys in the configurator um now we have dynamic idle management so now since we're using we have rpm telemetry telling us our rpms of their motors now we can go ahead and they can dynamically change the idle uh using that telemetry from the motor rpm so that's gonna be a different way of them pretty much having the idle on your motors when you go ahead and arm your quad. It's gonna be idling just above wherever the desync is or whatever the RPM telemetry tells it to do. So moving on to the next thing, fully configurable VTX control with VTX tables. So VTX tables is actually really handy because you'll get like a, you have a TBS Unify Pro HV and then you'll have maybe a TBS Unify Race. Both of them, both of them are both unifies, but they also have two different milliwatts. So when you're changing your, um, like your power output in your goggles, it'll say up to 800 milliwatts on the race one, which was really confusing for a lot of people. So, and this goes to any smart audio or any um, Tramp telemetry receiver um, VTX. So what we can go ahead and do here is tell it what channels we have on our VTX. So if we have illegal channels that it doesn't show, it doesn't even show it. And then we also have where we can tell its power. So when it says 200 milliwatts in the OSD for your power, it's actually 200 and not 800. Um, same thing for 800 or 1,000 milliwatts. It's not, now it goes up to 1,000 or whatever you tell the VTX tables. So let's go ahead and click on that real quick so you guys can see what these VTX tables actually are. So pretty much it's just like this. It will tell you exactly what to put in. There's actually an entire um, write up on this. Let's go ahead and click on VTX tables right here and then click on this. And pretty much whatever, you know, TBS Unify Evo, if you have this power level. So it has some examples down here, a complete example. And you can put this in the CLI and it will spit out pretty much the VTX table you put in. So you have different one for Smart Audio 2.0 and 1.0, and then we have Tramp Telemetry, like all that stuff. So pretty cool stuff. Um, let's go ahead and go back. 
So now moving on to the minor features, we have support for the Spectrum serial protocol. This is also, I believe, the DGI protocol as well. Um, and then we also have su support for board-specific custom defaults. This is more just for board developers and also for beta flight developers' sanity for not having to make a whole bunch of targets. And then we also have support for arbitrary gyro and mag alignment. So a new thing that's been coming out this year is dual gyros. So now we can actually use both gyro da data in the actual loop and also the filtering for the um, flight controller. So it's actually now supporting it instead of just using one or the other gyro. So let's go ahead and move on to the configurator. All right, so now we're in the main screen of Betaflight. As they, you can tell, it kind of has a little bit of a fresh, a little refresh to it, make it look a little more modern. And I kind of do like it. So I have a flight controller already flashed with 4.1 release candidate one. And that page looks pretty much the same, except for a little bit different texts and stuff like that. You have the same UART page as well. So nothing has changed here. Configuration page, a couple things have changed on here. Um, before I mentioned about DShot 1200 being removed. Yep, it is removed from the list, so you cannot see it no more. So DShot 600, I guess that's what I'll be doing. And maybe I'll try out ProShot maybe too. I don't know, we'll see. And then we also have a button here for bi-directional DShot. That is for the RPM filtering. And then we also have this motor poles here that's added to tell you how many poles are on the motor. So then it knows pretty much it's RPM information. And then we have down here, this is all the same. Nothing has changed from 4.0. All this is the same. Nothing different there. Nothing is different in power and battery. Now in pit tuning, changed a little bit. So we have our pitch right here. And then we have these sliders, which is really awesome actually. A lot of times when you're tuning, um, you're tuning like your P and then you put your D up. Well, if you want to do your P and your D gains proportional to each other, you can go ahead and start increasing this and it'll increase both of these values based off the defaults. And it'll keep going up and up and up. So it's proportional to each other. And yeah, so they have the P, D balance. They have all this, this stuff. And then stick response, see feed forwards going up now. So yeah, so this will be kind of come in handy, especially if you're not used to tuning. And then we also have right here is our rate profile selection, which is kind of just the same thing, but now it's on a tab. And then also we have our filtering data here. All right, so now we go over to the receiver tab. Nothing has changed in here. Modes tab, everything is the same as well. Motors tab, OSD tab, everything's the same. Um, if you want, remember I said when you flash, you have to go ahead and update your OSD. You'll do that right down here, font manager. And then you can just flash um, the default. So I have the default selected and you just click flash and we'll flash it. So that's real easy. Um, and then right here is our video transmitter settings. What you have to do is input, remember that information I told you before? So it was right here, VTX tables. And then we clicked on this. So what you wanna go ahead and do is pick the transmitter that you're using and then just copy this, paste this into CLI Make sure you have Smart Audio or Tramp Telemetry enabled in the Ports tab. And then once you have that, you can go ahead and get into here. And you can check out all the channels and you can also ch set your channel right here, right now if you wanted to. And then you just hit Save. So that is pretty much it with all the changes in the configurator. But there has been some really nice changes here. So that should do it on the rundown on Betaflight 4.1. Um, I do tons of beta flight tutorials, uh, quad building, freestyle flights, and a lot of cool builds as well. Um, so if you haven't already, subscribe to my channel. Give this video a like. Leave a comment down below. If you've already uh, started flying 4.1, let me know how it feels, how you like it, um, or if you don't like it. So let me know there, and I'll see you guys in a future video. Peace.